is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hi, Ren. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this week for episode 59 of Trivia for Kids. 59. Wow. Wow is right. How are you today, Ren? Good. Were you ready for a break from cleaning your room to record the podcast? Yes. So I'm sure you kiddos out there have to do chores. What is your least favorite chore, Ren? My least favorite chore is probably cleaning, like like picking up stuff and hanging it up. My favorite chore is dusting. Oh, you like to dust? But your least favorite is putting clothes away in yes. your bedroom, I bet. My least favorite chore? What do you think it is? What do you think my least favorite Mopping. chore is? Oh, I don't mind mopping. Doing the dishes. My least favorite chore is laundry. Oh, I hate laundry. I bet there are a lot of moms and dads who would agree with me because when you're doing laundry for a family, it feels like the never ending story because there's so much laundry all the time, which actually I'm doing laundry right now. So yay. I was glad to take a break to come do the podcast too. Hey, we've got two jokes this week. The first one comes from Parker. Thanks, Parker. What did the music teacher say to his class? Um, don't forget to take notes. Good one. It is. And the second comes from Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. What did one volcano say to the other? Mm. I lava you. So I forgot. I um we had a little mistake last week on episode 58 of the podcast. And somebody thankfully emailed me and said, hey, you were wrong on this. And so I edited the podcast and cut the part out where we were wrong. But some of you may have listened early enough that you caught my mistake. So my mistake was when Quinn and I were talking about the world's, I'm sorry, the most populous state capital, Quinn guessed Nevada. And then she asked if the state capital was Las Vegas. And I said, no, it was Reno. When in fact, we were both wrong. Do you know what the capital of Nevada is, Ren? Uh, no. Carson City. Oh. I, after I after this listener told me I was wrong, I was like, ah, oh, I totally forgot. So to the entire state of Nevada and the Nevada residents, I apologize for getting your state capital incorrect. But Sorry. We, we learn from our mistakes and I guarantee you I will not ever get that wrong again, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Trivia time? Trivia time. Let's do it. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one, the category is food. Question one, true or false? French fries were invented in France. Question two, this question comes from listener Nico. Thank you, Nico. What food comes in shapes like rotini, penne, ziti, and rigatoni? Question three, gumbo and jambalaya are popular local foods from which U.S. city? Question four, Japanese horseradish is more popularly known as what? Question five, what spread is a combination of roasted hazelnuts, skim milk, and cocoa with a creamy consistency and a chocolate taste 
with a hint of roasted nut flavor. Question six. This question comes from listener Mariah. Thanks, Mariah. True or false? All types of flowers are edible. Question seven. Which president brought mac and cheese back to the United States from Paris? And now the answers to round one. Question one. True or false? French fries were invented in France. False. It is false. They were invented in Belgium. It is said that this dish was discovered by American soldiers in Belgium during World War I. And since the dominant language of southern Belgium is French, they dubbed the tasty potatoes French fries. Hmm. Tell me your opinion on French fries. Um, I don't like them when they're like soft and like just like floppy. I like them when they're crispy. Like a and good very crunchy. Salty. Yes, I also love a but sweet I don't potato like fry. When they're like black yeah you like a good golden crispy fry yeah yeah nice and salty i like them i like mcdonald's fries yeah they, mcdonald's does have great fries question two what food comes in shapes like rotini penne ziti and rigatoni pasta oh so, like, rigatoni noodles, I think those are the curly ones. And penne's are, like, little tubes. What and are the bow ties? Oh, bow ties have a, a fancy Italian name, but I don't know what those are called. But, yeah, pasta. Question three. Gumbo and jambalaya are popular local foods in which U.S. city? Huh? New Orleans. Oh. I made jambalaya not too long ago. And what was your opinion of it? It had shrimp and sausage in rice, and it was spicy. When you said spicy, that means I hated it. And you don't like sausage, and you don't like shrimp. And if it's just a little bit spicy, I hate it. Sometimes I try to expand my children's culinary tastes, and it blows up works. blows up in my face. Quinn will eat it. The other two are like, can we have chicken nuggets? <laughs> yeah. Question four. Japanese horseradish is more popularly known as what? Wasabi. Wasabi. What is your opinion on wasabi? I've heard it very spicy. It's You've very heard it's very spicy. spicy? You're not a sushi lover like Quinn and your dad and I are. The only reason why I know what wasabi is is from Big Hero 6 when they're when they call this guy named they call this guy wasabi and he's like i spilled wasabi on my shirt one time <laughs> one time and then they called him wasabi because of that yeah that's funny question five what spread is a combination of roasted hazelnuts skim milk cocoa with a creamy consistency and a chocolate taste with a hint of roasted nut flavor i wonder it's not like brex and quinn love this Nutella. Nutella. This... Also known as chocolate toast. Right. Brex and Quinn have toast with Nutella on it every morning for breakfast. I don't. You don't, but they call it chocolate toast. I don't I don't really like that you have to put Nutella on top of butter. Oh, that they, does not... they love it. Question six. True or false? All types of flowers are edible. False. It is false, but there are a lot of flowers that are edible. Surprising ones. Edible flowers include citrus blossoms, clover, daisies, dandelions, hibiscus, honeysuckle, lavender, lilacs, mums, pansies, roses, sunflowers, and violets. And that's just to name a few. However, you should always be careful because some flowers are toxic to eat. For example, the lily of the valley is very toxic. The flowers, leaves, and stem should not be eaten. The plant contains cardiac glycosides, which acts directly on the heart and causes vomiting, blurriness, slow heart rates, and can be fatal in some cases. 
Do you have to cook them or can you just pick them and eat it? Well, you don't have to cook them, no. However, you should be careful before you just eat flowers because they could be sprayed with some pesticides or things that might make you sick. So I think some grocery stores, you can buy edible flowers or if it's, you know, maybe in nature where you know that nothing has been sprayed or, you know, that they are perfectly natural with nothing on them, it would be fine to eat. There is one type of flower that you and your grandma, that she told you you could eat. So you usually like to try them a little bit, don't you? I showed my friend and we ate them and then my mom saw me doing it and she was like, what are you doing? And then you said, Grandma told me I could. Question seven. Which president brought mac and cheese back to the United States from Paris? Thomas Jefferson. Oh. Remember, he was in Paris. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You would have had to think about Hamilton to remember yeah. that fact. But thankfully, I'm glad Thomas Jefferson did that because mac and cheese is delicious. Round two, the category is Alvin and the Chipmunks. Thank you to Allison for this category submission. Thanks, Allison. Question one, who says they are the smart chipmunk when they first meet Dave? Question two, which chipmunk is afraid of eagles? Question three, what does Ian Hawk give the chipmunks to drink during a practice session? Question four, true or false? Alvin, Simon, and Theodore are the only singing chipmunks. Question five, true or false? When Simon met Dave, he was wearing glasses. Question six, what are the names of the three chipettes? Question seven, what song do the chipmunks sing in the beginning of the first Alvin and the Chipmunks movie? Round two answers. Question one. Who says they are the smart chipmunk when they first meet Dave? Simon. Simon is my favorite chipmunk. I like Alvin or Theodore. You like the other two that I don't? Well, I like, that's okay. At least they're all represented. Theodore or Simon? Theodore is technically my favorite. He is adorable. Question two. Which chipmunk is afraid of eagles? Theodore. They all should be afraid of eagles because eagles eat groundhogs and chipmunks. Well, that's true. But Theodore is the only one who is knowingly afraid of them. Question three. What does Ian Hawk give the chipmunks during a practice session? For some reason, coffee. He does give them coffee because he wants them to work harder and longer and not get tired and do more. Because he's not a very good guy, is he? And then Theodore goes crazy. Question four, true or false? Alvin, Simon, and Theodore are the only singing chipmunks. False. Who else is this? who else sings? That are chipmunks. Yeah. Rescue Rangers, um, the girls. The girl chipmunks, yep. And the Rescue Rangers, do they sing? Yeah. Ch -ch -ch chip and Dale. Yeah. Do they Rescue. sing that part though? I don't know. I guess. I'm sure they Maybe. can sing. Yeah. Question five. True or false? When Simon met Dave, he was wearing glasses. False. Yeah, I think Simon, wasn't he um he didn't have glasses, so wasn't he bumping into stuff? Yeah. And not, you know, paying any attention. Like, yeah. he couldn't see, so then Dave gave him those cute little circle -y glasses. I didn't think he they even had clothes at that time. 
Question six. What are the names of the three Chipettes? Brittany. I know that one's Brittany. That's all I know. Brittany, Jeanette, and Eleanor. Oh, I remember, like, Theodore and Eleanor. Eleanor's like a girl, Theodore. Jeanette is the... Jeanette is like a girl... Simon. A girl, Simon. Yep. And uh, Brittany. Brittany is like a girl... Alvin. Alvin. Yep. They are the ones that fit together. Question seven. What song do the chipmunks sing in the beginning of the first Alvin and the Chipmunks movie? Christmas don't be late. Me, I want a hula hoop. So can I tell you something that I'm kind of embarrassed about from my childhood? What? One year when I went to camp, I was probably about your age, and they had a talent show. And my camp counselor learned that I can talk in a chipmunk voice. And she talked me into singing Christmas Don't Be Late at summer camp. Should I tell, should I do a try it? Yeah. Oh my. I haven't done my chipmunk voice in a while. They have it. Yeah, you have. Cross, must cross, must cross. <laughs> Wait, hold on. That wasn't great. Cross, must cross, must tell, must more. Time for tours and time for cheer. Wow. Thank you. It's not that great, but it kind of sounds like them. It does. Thank you. So anyway, embarrassing story from my childhood. <laughs> Round three. The category is underground. Thank you to Ellie for this idea. Thanks, Ellie. Question one. What do termites eat? Question two. What burrowing animal has very poorly developed eyes, but has a very sensitive snout and long clawed digits that they use to dig tunnels? Question three, what invertebrate can dig down to around six feet, creating porous holes that help water and nutrients from above penetrate the ground? Question four, what small furry rodents burrow tunnels through yards of North America and Central America and have external fur-lined cheek pouches or pockets. Question 5. What is the only species of owl that lives underground? Question six, what is a mixture of organic matter, minerals, gases, liquids, and organisms that together support life? Question seven, this question comes from Parker. Thanks, Parker. True or false? All female ants can lay eggs in an ant colony. And now the answers to round three. Question one. What do termites eat? Wood. Yep. Termites are most, most, you know, notorious for eating woods, wood and houses and stuff like that. But... The food of termites is mainly cellulose, which is obtained from wood, grass, leaves, manure of herbivores, and materials of vegetative, vegetative origin, like paper, cardboard, or cotton. Depending on the species, termites' nests are found underground, in dead trees and stumps, in the tops of live trees, and in wooden structures. I am kind of scared of termites. Same. And eating my house or my yeah. shed, because that would be very bad news. It would. Question two. 
What burrowing animal has very poorly developed eyes, but has a very sensitive snout and long clawed digits that they use to dig tunnels? Moles. They are moles. Moles, cute or not cute? Um, well, one time I about peed my pants from a mole. We were going ice, I mean, we were going skiing, and we were on a lift, and there was, like, a baby mole thing, and it was running towards us, and it was about to jump on my ski, and then the ski lift had a big drop, and it just fell off the side, and then the next time that we went around, we couldn't find it. I remember you telling me this story. Disgusting. You guys were on a, you guys took a run on your own, and the three of you, you were with a friend, too, and you came back, and you were like, Mom, we saw a mole! So anyway, I don't know for sure if it was a, was a mole or not, but it I do. Like, what if it was like a mouse? It was like, it was, it lo- it's basically like a mole, but then it had long tail like a mouse. Oh, it was like a circle like a mole. I don't know. But whatever it was, you were freaked out. It was about to climb onto my ski. Of course <laughs> I was freaked out. Question three. What invertebrate can dig down to around six feet, creating porous holes that help water and nutrients from above penetrate the ground? Earthworms. What else do you use earthworms for? Um, Fishing bait? Oh, I guess. Yep. Earthworms are great things. Do you like to play with earthworms? Uh, I I don't like play with any worms. You don't? When I was younger, when we were like fishing, I was not interested in that, and I would open up the worm bucket and just start picking out the worms and putting them on a stick and then dumping it back. <laughs> Question four: What small furry rodents burrow tunnels through yards of North and Central America, and have external fur-lined cheek pouches or pockets? First, I was going to guess squirrels, but now I'm guessing gophers or pocket gophers. That's it, a gopher. I I looked it up because I was thinking maybe it could be chipmunks too, but chipmunks only... Or just only, randomly chubby. Chipmunks only, only dig like 50 cent piece size holes in the ground, and gophers dig big old tennis ball size holes in mounds in people's yards. We have lots of gophers around here, and they are... Horrible. They are very, very annoying to homeowners because they tear up our lawns. Question five. What is the only species of owl that lives underground? I have a picture of it in my brain, but I have no idea what it's called. A burrowing owl. Yes, 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 yes. They live underground in burrows that they've dug themselves or taken over from a prairie dog, ground squirrel, or tortoise. They live in grasslands, deserts, and other open habitats where they hunt mainly on insects and rodents. Oh, that's cool. It is. Question six. What is a mixture of organic matter, minerals, gases, liquids, and organisms that together support life? Lino. Dirt or soil. Dirt. Yep. Or soil. You're right. I, if I wouldn't have been able to, like if somebody said, what's dirt? I don't think I could have been able to come up with what it is but organic matter minerals gases liquids and organisms dirt (laughs) question seven true or false all female ants can lay eggs in an ant colony no 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 false it is false the queen is the only ant that can lay eggs a male ant's job is to mate with future queen ants once the queen is old enough to lay eggs she spends the whole rest of her life laying eggs that's it Ouch. (laughs) Ouch. Round number four. The category is fairy tales. Question one. What did Hansel and Gretel leave a trail of in order to find their way home? Question two. Who is Little Red Riding Hood going to visit when she meets the big bad wolf? Question three, why did Sleeping Beauty fall asleep? Question four, in Jack and the Beanstalk, 
When Jack was on his way to the market to sell his cow for money, what did he trade the cow for instead? Question 5. How many thieves did Alibaba have to deal with to get his hands on the treasure? Question 6. In the Three Little Pigs, what three different materials were the pigs' houses made of? Question 7. Who tricks the gingerbread man by offering to carry him across the river? And now the round four answers. Question 1. What did Hansel and Gretel leave a trail of in order to find their way home? Breadcrumbs. I think they could have come up with a better solution than breadcrumbs. I I think that there would be a like an animal that would just come behind them and eat their breadcrumbs. Yeah. And or also breadcrumbs would be hard to see on the ground. Yeah. Especially when it's really what would you ones. use instead? Maybe like sticks or rocks or oh, there are these little cheap um like plastic things that you put on your finger and they're like little lights. <laughs> But they were shove in, those in the ground. This was written in like the 1800s, I think. Oh well, then I'd use um shoes. Okay, those are bigger. Question two: Who was Little Red Riding Hood going to visit when she meets the big bad wolf? Her grandma, and then the big bad wolf, and then the big bad grandma. wolf eats grandma, and then she eats Little Red Riding Hood, and then the grandpa has to come and shoot the wolf and get them out. I don't think it's the grandpa. I think it's just like a like oh. a guy in the forest. I think he's oh. called like a wood carver or something. Oh. I don't know. Well, I thought it was a grandpa. Question three. Why did Sleeping Beauty fall asleep? Um, uh, one of those pinwheel thingies. That in, it, there's, it was a really sharp thing at the top. And she, she pricked, pricked her, her finger, finger on an enchanted spinning wheel. Yes. You spinning. got it. Question four. In Jack and the Beanstalk, when Jack was on his way to market to sell his cow for money, what did he trade the cow for instead? Magic beans. If I was Jack's mother, I would have been very upset, like she was, had he traded the whole cow for a handful of beans. I would have been more than upset. Same. Question five. How many thieves did Alibaba have to deal with to get his hands on the treasure? Alibaba had them 40 thieves and 40 thieves. Had Four, them. Yep, 40 thieves. That's how I knew it too from the Aladdin song. Well, Alibaba had them 40 thieves. Yep. Question six. In the three little pigs, what three different materials were the pigs' houses made of? Easy way to remember this is rhyming. Straw, sticks, and bricks. Sticks and bricks? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think you would make your house out of? Concrete? <laughs> Concrete? Bricks. Bricks. Wood. Bricks. <laughs> Question seven. Who tricks the gingerbread man by offering to carry him across the river? The fox. And that sly fox was like... You can ride on my tail. You can ride on my back. You better jump up to my head. You better come on my... Because remember, he was taking him across the water. And oh, as yeah. the fox got deeper and deeper into the water, then the gingerbread man had to go up higher and higher. And then all of a sudden, he just like goes on his nose. <laughs> and then he was eaten. Yep. Poor guy. Poor guy. Round five. The category is gray. Question one. What two colors do you mix together to get the color gray? Question two. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, what is the name of the gray wizard? Question three. 
Question three. As we get older, our hair will turn gray. What is the name of the natural substance that determines hair color? Keratin, melanin, or serotonin? Question four. What is the fastest breed of dog? Question five. What type of drink has a blend named after Earl Grey? Question six. Which animal's fingerprints are almost identical to humans? Question seven. What is the writing core of a pencil made from? And now the answers to round five. Question one. What two colors do you mix together to get the color gray? White and black. White and black. Question two. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, what is the name of the gray wizard? Gandalf. So we just watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy with Quinn and Ren. Did you think it was too intense for your age, or did you like it? I liked it. And Gandalf the Grey is one of the main characters. Turns into white. Don't give it away. Uh-oh. Question three. As we get older, our hair will turn gray. What is the name of the natural substance that determines hair color? Keratin, melanin, or serotonin? Melanin. Melanin is the chemical in the body that gives hair and skin its color. As we age, our hair follicles will begin to lose their ability to produce melanin, and our hair will begin to turn gray or white. What do you think your hair will turn white at? What age? Well, yeah. my mom's hair is still not white, and she's, well, I don't want to tell you her age, but maybe like in my 70s? Hmm. Hopefully. I don't know. I think my hair will turn white. Um... Sooner than yours because, wait, was your hair blonde when you were a kid? My hair was blonde until I was about in kindergarten and then it started to turn dark. But your hair's blonde still. Well, then I'm guessing that my hair will probably be whiter earlier. Think so? If my hair doesn't get darker. Well, we'll see, right? Yeah. Question four. What is the fastest breed of dog? Hound. What kind of hound? What's this category? Greyhound. A greyhound! Yeah, I got it right. I had no idea. <laughs> Originally bred to be hunting dogs, greyhounds are widely accepted to be the fastest dog breed. For decades, greyhounds have been used in dog racing. A highly energetic breed, it comes to no surprise that their legs can carry them as fast as 45 miles per hour. Yeah, it's a fast dog. It is. Question five. What type of drink has a blend named after Earl Grey? Tea? Tea! The tea is named after Charles, the second Earl of Grey. I feel like I should read this in an an English accent. The tea is named after Charles, the second Earl of Grey and British Prime Minister from 1830 to 1834. That's enough. The story goes that a Chinese Mandarin named the tea after Earl Grey after he saved his son from drowning. But that has never been proven. Hmm. Question six. Which animal's fingerprints are almost identical to humans? Koalas. Koalas. That's such a, that's one of my favorite trivia questions. That's so, so unique. It is. Because of all the animals, you would guess like chimpanzees or gorillas, right? Because they're yeah, because they're like our descendants, right? Because they're pretty closely related to us. But nope, it's koalas. Question seven: What is the writing core of a pencil made from? Graphite. Very good. Woo! Good job. 
I would have guessed the answer was lead. This may come as a surprise, but lead pencils do not contain any lead. Never did. The lead is actually a mixture of graphite and clay. The more graphite, the softer and darker the point. Because chemistry was a young science when pencils were invented, people thought graphite was a form of lead, hence the name given to pencils. So it's always been graphite, even wow. though they were used to be called lead pencils. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. It is cool. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one. What is the only species of owl that lives underground? Burrowing owl. Question two. Japanese horseradish is more popularly known as what? Wasabi. Question three. How many thieves did Alibaba have to deal with to get his hands on the treasure? 40 thieves. Question four. What is the writing core of a pencil made from? Graphite. Question five. What invertebrate can dig down to around six feet, creating porous holes that help water and nutrients from above penetrate the ground? Earthworms. Question six, which U.S. president brought mac and cheese back to the United States from Paris? Thomas Jefferson. Question seven, as we get older, our hair will turn gray. What is the name of the natural substance that determines hair color? Melanin. Which is different than melatonin. <laughs> Which is what you take at night before bed, right? Yeah. So this week, we have a listener with a birthday. So we're going to give a big birthday shout out to listener Bowden. Woo! Happy birthday, Bowden. Happy birthday. Okay, you just got home from school. We're done with the podcast. Go outside and play with your friends. It's a beautiful day. Thanks okay. for helping me. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you. Have a great week. Have a great week. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com.